let's look at chapter 4 verse 1 Christ suffered in the flesh and that's not talking about his physical suffering on the cross because at the end of the verse it says if you suffer in the flesh you'll stop sinning you don't stop sinning by being crucified on calvary you stop sinning when you put yourself on the cross in your heart that is the suffering in the flesh if you want to understand the phrase suffering in the flesh in verse 1 this is the true grace of god ask yourself which suffering in the flesh verse 1 makes you stop sinning you see how the true grace of god is that which helps you to stop sinning not that which comforts you in your sinning you go through the whole of peter's epistle and you won't find one verse that gives you comfort in your sin that tells you oh no 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 it's okay you will keep on losing your temper you will okay, you will sin like this don't worry god forgives you that's not peter's message that is a false grace he says suffer in the flesh and you will stop sinning so that the rest of your life you can live for the will of god yeah there are many other things like that and then i'll say one more thing chapter 5 verse 5 you younger men be subject to your elders this is the true grace of god if you have not learned to be subject to your elders i can say to your face you have not understood the true grace of god as crystal clear to me this is the true grace of god stand firm in it be subject to your elders in matters related to the church an elder brother is not telling you which house to buy unless you are cheating he tell you don't cheat and tell lies and get a house be honest don't pay black money that's what we teach in this church don't pay black money to buy a house oh brother zack everybody does it everybody watches pornography every husband yells at his wife everybody cheats on their taxes so what everybody goes to movies this everybody does it everybody goes to hell no we believe in righteousness so an elder doesn't tell you which house to buy or if he advises you on marriage it's not telling you whom to marry <coughs> giving you advice on marry a godly man or a godly girl but no elder no sensible elder will tell you you must marry this person or you must not live here or you must live there no they only tell you what is good for your life in relation to the church they will tell you how to dress if you're a girl don't come here and tempt the men here men as it is have a struggle with all the filthy things that are everywhere in magazines and newspapers and on the billboards don't add to that temptation by you coming to church dressed in a immodest way with tight clothes and exposing your body with sleeveless blouses and all that just just be careful you say can i go to work like that if you think jesus will be happy with you go i don't think he will jesus believes in modesty do you want jesus to go with you to your place of work the standards in this area is coming down tremendously and i'm sorry to say parents are not strict with their daughters they just let them dress as they like <clears throat> be careful that you don't lose her one day that's all i say lose her to the world or to the devil i remember once somebody asked me brother zack what shall i advise my young girl who asks me daddy can i dress like some of these sisters young sisters in cfc who are so fashionable and tight fitting clothes and bandy of jewelry and all <clears throat> what shall i tell her i said tell her there were two trees in the garden of eden and there are two types of sisters in cfc adam could choose which tree he wanted to go to 
and your little girl can choose which type of sister she wants to be like. The fashionable worldly types or the God-fearing modest types. Have a choice. In paradise, in Eden, there was a choice. CFC is not better than paradise. Here also there's a choice. Choose. We don't force people at all <clears throat> to dress this way or that way. We advise people, be subject to your elders. And this is the true grace of God. And if you want this grace, he says, humble yourself. Because God gives grace to the humble, 1 Peter 5, 5. And he's opposed to the proud. Then, <clears throat> if God gives you grace, when the devil, verse 8, comes like a roaring lion, you can resist him and he will run away from you. I, for me anyway, I know if I have the true grace of God by a couple of things. One, that sin cannot rule over me. Anger cannot rule me. Lust cannot rule my thoughts. I have fruit of the spirit of self-control. Money cannot rule me. Then I know the grace of God is there. And when I can resist the devil and he flees, I know I've got the grace of God. But if you're scared of the devil, I want to tell you in Jesus' name, you're not living under the grace of God. Here it says, God gives grace to the humble, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist him. None of us should be afraid of the devil. If you're afraid of the devil, you're afraid at night that the devil may come and harass you. You haven't understood the grace of God. I'll never forget that story I heard of a man of God. <clears throat> who he, this is what he himself said. He felt his bed shake at night. And um, he looked up and saw in some form the devil sitting there. And he said, oh, it's only you, eh? And he turned over and slept. It's only you. <laughs> what can you do to me? Well, now, I don't know whether that's a true story. But the moral of that story, I understand. That if I see the devil somewhere, I've never seen the devil, I've never seen Jesus. But I don't want to see the devil. I know that if the devil comes to me, he'll come like an angel of light. He will not come in a scary way. Don't be afraid. He's more interested in deceiving you than harming you. Remember this. He comes more as a snake, more than a lion. Deceiving you, but let's stand firm in the true grace of God. <clears throat> let's turn back to Acts 20. I just want to point out this thing. The way in which we are drifting today in Christendom is away from this true grace of God that Peter said. Paul said in Acts 20, 24, this is the true grace of God that I preach. And therefore, because I preach the true grace of God, Acts 20, 26, I testify to all of you, I am free from your blood. That's exactly what I said. I am not guilty now if you go to hell. That's what Paul was saying. Your blood is not on my hands. Because I have proclaimed the true grace of God to you. I, verse 24. I have solemnly testified this true grace of God to you. Therefore, verse 26. Therefore, I am innocent of your blood. Because he says, you won't see my face again. I don't know. He says that in verse 25. You will not see my face again. I'm going off. Paul had some sense that he'd be imprisoned and killed. So he says... Folks, Paul was telling the Ephesian elders, you may never see me now until the judgment seat of Christ. So he told those Ephesian elders, in that day when you and I stand at the judgment seat of Christ and you look at me, Paul says, I'll be able to say, your blood is not on my hands. And if you lost out, you got yourself to blame. <laughs> 